In order to hit shots efficiently, it's really important that you use your legs as part of your kinetic chain. But I find a lot of adult tennis players, especially slightly older players, really struggle to use their legs on their shots and they struggle to use their kinetic chain effectively and it prevents them from hitting efficient strokes and hitting with as much power as they want and also maintaining the level of control. And there's often a major underlying reason why players aren't able to use their legs. And that's what I'm gonna be exploring and talking about in this video. I'm gonna show you a very simple assessment to help you figure out if this is going on for you and then talk about how you can train and improve and address this underlying problem. So hopefully you find the video helpful. If you do, be awesome if you give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel before, it's much appreciated if you could do that as well. Now there can be a number of different things that prevent players from using their legs effectively. You know, one of the big ones is gonna be not being set up in the right position in time. But here we're gonna be talking about something far more fundamental than that because whenever you use your legs on your shots to efficiently kind of create racket head speed using your kinetic chain, we initiate all of the strokes, whether it's the forehand, the backhand, double single-hander, slice, even the same thing on the serve, the initiation of all of those strokes comes from the hips, internal and external rotation of the hips. So if I'm hitting a forehand, I drive my hip into rotation to start the swing. And that's where I've, whether I've got a more classical style or whether I'm using a more modern style. And it's gonna be the same on all strokes. And what I found after assessing hundreds of older tennis players over the last few years is that most players don't have good coordination in terms of hip, internal and external rotation. A lot of players just don't have any internal and external rotation. They can't control the movement. They can't make it happen because the hips are too jammed. It just doesn't move. And then the players that are able to make it move, they don't have very good coordination. And hopefully it makes sense that this is an underlying physical skill. If you can't rotate your hips and if you can't coordinate rotation, it's completely impossible that you're going to magically develop that ability when the ball's flying at you and you're running and twisting and you're doing all these different things. That's not the way it works. You have to have the underlying physical ability first. So here I'm going to show you a very simple assessment that you can use to identify if you're able to do this and then talk about how you can train it. So the assessment is very simple. You're going to stand on one leg, you're going to keep your pelvis still, you're going to keep your spine still, and you're going to internally and externally rotate the leg. So we're not thinking about just moving the foot, we're trying to twist the whole leg, so we should see the knee twisting in and out. Firstly, you want to see whether you can do that keeping your pelvis still, or as you try and do it, does the whole body twist, does the spine move, and do strange things happen? So we want to do that assessment on the right leg, and we want to do it on the left leg, keeping the pelvis still and you can hold your hands there to make sure it's staying still. Find these big bony bits at the front. Try that on the right leg, try that on the left leg. Are you able to actually create that movement internally and externally rotating it? And feel free to hold on when you do this. I don't want to challenge your balance here. We're looking at coordination. Then the second part of that assessment is going to be the speed at which you can move at. So are you able to do that quickly internally and externally rotating? Or when you start trying to do it quickly, do you do kind of funny things with your feet? Do you kind of do funny things with your spine? Do you start twisting and changing things? So test that on the right side, test it on the left side. Are you able to make good, clean, fast movements internally and externally rotating with the pelvis staying still? And things to look out for here are kind of double movements. So instead of going all the way over like this, people kind of do double movements and they, they get a little bit twitchy. Other things that happen is the foot starts to move or players move their leg from side to side. What we should see, leg pointing straight, just a clean rotation like that done accurately and at speed. So that is a very simple assessment you can do to figure out one, can you move this joint? And then can you do it with a high degree of coordination and speed? 
So how did you get on with the assessment? Leave me a comment down below and let me know. Were you able to move evenly on both sides? Did both hips move properly? Was the coordination even on so both sides? Or was one of them really fast, one of them was really slow? Or did they both have problems? Because once you know that, then we can work on trying to improve it. And the wonderful thing about our body and our brains is the first thing that we can try and do to improve something like this, and here we're testing parts of the brain that create and coordinate movement, is do more of the assessment. So if you can't move your hip in internal and external rotation, the first solution is to try and do internal and external rotation. Just thinking about it, feel free, hold on for balance, but then think about the area. What muscles do I need to move to twist my knee out? What muscles do I need to move to twist my knee in? And then once you can make the basic movement happen, then start to work on improving the speed. So can I make it faster and faster? And you can just do that several times a day. And this is gonna be a movement training exercise and a, a part of the brain coordination training exercise and by doing it frequently for a lot of people that's going to be enough to make improvements in your coordination. Now there's other things that you can do and something really simple that you could work on is making coordinated shapes. So you know the way that this operates we've got a part of the brain that creates movement and a part of the brain that coordinates movement and we have to challenge them we have to give them specific targets. So I might, if I realize that my right leg isn't as coordinated, I can try the hip internal and external rotation. But then what I could also do is make some circles because that's a complicated shape as far as our brains are concerned. So I can hold my leg in this position and go, right, I am going to try and make a perfect circle that takes four seconds. Am I able to keep my pelvis still when I make this circle? Can I make it last four seconds? Does it look like a circle or the, you know, is it twitchy and funny things are going on? Am I able to keep my foot pointing forwards? Or when I do it, does my leg twist out because I can't control things? So it's a very simple concept, but what I found for people is it's a really effective way to improve coordination. So that's something else that's simple that you could work on to try and improve the coordination in your hips. And I find that depending on the person, sometimes these simple strategies are really effective at improving coordination. Other times, they're not. Other times, we need to find different ways to get areas switched on and to improve the coordination, to remove these limitations, to then allow you to improve your game. And if you'd like to learn more about how to do that, this is what I help tennis players with. I use brain-based training to help players improve how their body functions, to improve their skill, so then they can learn tennis more quickly and reach a higher level than would otherwise be possible. So I've got a class that's gonna teach you a lot more about it, and it's also gonna explain a little bit more about my, how my program works and how I work with players. So I'll place that down in the description so that you can check that out if you're interested. So hopefully this has been an interesting video for you. Like I said, leave me a comment, let, you know, let me know how you got on with the assessments. Uh, again, if you found the video helpful, awesome if you give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And any comments or questions, leave those down below as well. I always try and answer everyone's comments as quickly as I can. Otherwise, I'll catch you next time.